Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order 201. And I will read the script. All right, so <clears throat> good afternoon. This is the open meeting of the Historic Structures Advisory Board being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend gathering, public gatherings. <clears throat> and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. <clears throat> the order which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not require public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Historic Structures Advisory Board is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how, identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded and all attendees are public participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen, share your screen on your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. So the public is encouraged to follow along with the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. <clears throat> We are now turning to the first agenda item. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each name to provide us any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please re remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to clearly in a, in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Uh, for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote, uh, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. All right. <clears throat> Um, members called them. Uh, so I got to call the members. Um, Lucy? Yes, here. Angus? Here. And I am here too. Um, and the staff, Holly? Present. Thank you. Okay, um, we'll adopt the agenda as it's written. And there are no minutes to approve, I assume. No, Mr. Chair, as far as the agenda goes, I did get a request for Linda Williams. Um, she's not here yet, but she'd like to have her item number 12 and number 22 pushed back to the end. She's already at the end of the meeting. She just wanted to move that one down because she's not here yet. She's in another meeting. Okay. I'm also going to make a suggestion for the agenda because we have limited time and it's a pretty long agenda. There are a few items on the agenda that to me looked like they were um, either not visible or not as highly on the concern list as the others. So when we get to them, I'm gonna suggest that we drop them down the list and attend to them at the end of the meeting. Um, that sounds good. Great. <clears throat> All right, so to start out, we're gonna take the first item on the agenda, which is to Highland Ave. Then we off the main house. Mr. Chair, could we have a, a motion to adopt the agenda? Oh. Sure. As as revised. As revised. Is there a motion? Lucy motion. Angus second. Second. All those in favor, of Lucy. Thank you. Okay, she's good. Angus. Good. Yeah. I'm also good with that. <clears throat> All right. So starting with two Highland Ave. Holly, do you want to? Let 
This is the locust. Right off a cliff road. You have four structures. You should have all received some information history that was forwarded to you on this site as well. So we have other members of the public at the meeting and I'm guessing that Mary and probably Rita are here for this application. Do you want to make some comments? Mary? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, I'm Mary Bergman, the Nantucket Preservation Trust. I think Mickey sent the commissioners the uh, research on this building. So this is a structure that was built in 1960, 1969, finished 1970. It was built by an architect named Paul um, Brewer, who was who is or was um, a professor at Yale for 40 years. He taught at the Yale School of Architecture. Uh, he specifically taught at the Yale Building Project from 19, I'm gonna get my dates here, 1971 to 2006. He was the director of the project and he was affiliated with the project from 1971 to 2013. Um, while he was at Yale, um, Paul worked uh, for Charles W. Moore, who was the Dean of the Yale School of Architecture. Um, one of the fathers of postmodernism. And the building project is a required course that has taught Paul estimates about 2,500 students in the last 40 years. It's a required course uh, that has was really a big, you know, he was a leader in that early design build movement. Projects have ranged from pavilions and health clinics. And, and really, I think the thing that's interesting about this is since 1989, the Yale Building Project has focused on building affordable housing in New Haven. Um, so it was conceived of while there were ver while various social movements of the 1960s converged, and this project that um, the architect who designed this house headed up really has helped allow students to understand how architecture can change and better people's lives. Um, with this house particularly, uh, I included in my history packet the original plans. Um, that Paul and his wife were nice enough to mail uh, to us. He sought to create a modern house that honored Nantucket's natural environment as well as its architectural traditions. And there are details like the white cedar shingles, the painted trim, the pitch roof, the massing, the roof walk that echo some of the older, more traditional structures. I think that the architect, architectural historian Vincent Scully might say that this is sort of that outcropping of the shingle style today. Um, how, uh, let's see. And so the original house was conceived of, from what I understand my conversations with the architect, uh, as the summer house and the winter house, the main house or the cottage, or I think that's called the cabana in the application, is two parts of a whole that allow for seasonal living. And in the packages I sent you that I hope you had a chance to look out there were more detailed notes on the construction of the house and the design inspirations. I think it's really important to remember that mid-century architecture is Nantucket's architectural heritage as well. You know, our, we, our architectural heritage does not end in 1846. Right. And the Nantucket Historical Commission is tasked to preserve Nantucket's architectural heritage. Um, we don't necessarily get to decide when that <laughs> stops our period of significance goes up to 1975. Um, it's kind of incredible, I think, when you think about the years between 1955, when the HTC was established, and 1975, that the modern architecture, mid-century modern architecture was built at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are enduring um, relics. You know, I think that we've already lost a lot of important mid-century buildings on this island because people don't understand them. And I just would argue that this is a contributing structure and should be considered as such. Oh, Miggy, can you unmute? 
Thanks, Angus. Um, uh, Rita, did you want to speak to this? No, I, I don't have anything to add beyond um, what Mary covered. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else that would like to speak to, on this application? Angus? Um, I, you hit on so many points that, um, that uh, I think, I think something like this for someone who sees the rest of Nantucket's architecture would be confused. They might not understand it. And uh, we're so lucky to have you guys, uh, MBT as a resource to be able to, to draw on the history to make it more understandable. Um, there are many principles of Nantucket architecture that are synthesized here. Um, and it's, it's an unusual, um, building. It doesn't, it, it's, it shares, uh, many of the, the same principles, but, um, I think that it's a, a valuable piece of history on the island and a version of shingle style that was allowed to be built at that time. And I think it would be a, um, a real loss to, to lose this uh, unique structure. And uh, again, thank you for all the information about it. It, uh, it, it really brings meaning to it. I, um, I think it's also, um, and Mary Bergman again, um, it's important to think about, sorry, the thought just slipped my mind, but I, the other thing I wanted to point out was that the garage was not part of the, you know, my, uh, the garage was not part of this plan. So I don't have any, I don't object to the garage demolition at all. Um, I think we need, when you think about architecture too, or what, you know, the reasons why something can be contributing or significant, sure, age is a factor. This is more than 50 years old. It's not the only factor, architectural style and um, association with a movement or a significant architect is important to keep in mind too. Thanks, Mary. Um, Lucy? Um, I went up there this morning, and I think um, part of the issue may be, too, is that the um, landscaping is so overgrown that no one can appreciate the um, architecture. Um, it's, it, I really couldn't see it. Um, I, but, and I agree with Mary that this isn't a good example that should be saved. I'd also, just as a point of trivia too, I would like to say that Vince Scully from Yale at that time used to summer in Quidnet with his wife and stepdaughters, which I grew up with. Uh, the historian's revenge. Okay, I think my audio is coming up, cutting in and out, but um, is it any other comments from the public on this application? I will just say myself that I completely agree with everything that's been said. I think it's a, while it's an unusual building for, for what we normally see here, I think it's a very important building. And I think that it should absolutely be saved. Um, I'd be very much opposed to demolition on this. Um, I guess another factor would be um, if they were willing to move the building um, within the property um, or elsewhere that may come up during the regular HTC application. I, I don't know how the, the rest of the board feels about a move versus a, a demo. Um, do we have any comments on that one? Lucy? Lucy frozen? Yeah. You missed that, you froze. Okay. You're, you're muted now. <laughs> now, can you hear me? Now we can. Your audio just, just stalled for a minute. Hey, thank you, Comcast. Um, I, I think the buildings should stay as they are. I think that the placement interaction of the buildings is, is um, 
very important. Okay, thanks, Angus. Any thoughts on that one? Yes, I um, I believe everything about this building was done intentionally, and I would say that its orientation to the sun and to the road um, and to the land are all um, specific uh, for this for this house and this siding. So, I. I would hate to see them lost uh, at all. I'd prefer to see them stay in situ. But if um, if it were between you know moving or permanently going away, I, I of course would <laughs> offer they move. But uh, I I think everything about this wants to to stay as uh, as it was originally intended. Thanks, Angus, I, and I, I would agree with that. I think I could I could tolerate. I think if if this were moved um, within the property, you know, not terribly far, um, and, and, and maintained the orientation and relationship, that probably would be fairly acceptable. But I think it's most preferable to leave it right where it is. So. Um, Unless there are any other comments from anybody else, I think we could probably move on from this one. Sounds good, Mr. Chair. Do you want to go to the garage now? Sure. Okay. This is the garage. I couldn't find an actual date on this one. I don't know if, if Mary did, but it, it does seem more I think that I was told in the 1980s, maybe. Yeah. But I know it wasn't part of the original. Is the sauna on as a separate application to demolish? Yes, it is. Okay. It's the fourth one. Um, comments? Anger? While the garage uh, fits in, in uh, similar characteristics with the house, uh, in the with the details like the cottage corners and and some of the trim details, um, I uh, I don't have any issue with this going going away. It's a later addition that I I am indifferent about. Lucy? I agree with Angus. And I do too. I think this is something that wasn't part of the original scheme of things and probably isn't quite as significant. Lucy? I do have one question now. Let's say conceivably that the, the owners restores the main house and then they want to build a garage to match that house. Would that be permissible? Yeah, I mean they can, they can do. Um, you you can't uh, under um, zoning. You you can in increase obviously the density. You can have a primary, secondary, and, and tertiary meeting the zoning requirements. So as long as they don't exceed that, they they'd be fine. No, I'm talking about architectural style. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I think that it would make sense for them to stick within the style. Um, you know, if it, if it's, pre-existing on the, on the parcel. So to make, would you make a recommendation to do alterations to this existing structure instead of trying to, to or am I, I'm going off on a tangent. I think they're applying for a demo in the garage and we have to look at that application, um, demo or move off, I guess. And, uh, you know, not get too hung up on what they might do in the future, so. Um, I, you know, any other comments on the garage? I think we're good there. Um, guest house is next. Um, Apparently, I don't have that one. I think it's they're calling it the cabana, but it's the. Is that it? Okay. 
it's the smaller yep, you're right. of the two structures that are connected by that porch. So I had that right. It was confusing me. Okay, so this is it. Yeah. yeah. So this is Winter House. Correct. Thank you for all that information too, by the way, Mary. Well, I think that's also the incredible thing is that these you know people are still alive. Usually when we get to just that people want to demolish, we can't ask those questions. Right. Mary you, um, said everything that you were saying about the, the house applies to both, the, the, yeah. the summer and winter house collection. Yeah, exactly. I think just another thing that popped into my mind is as I think about the HDC is I'm sure we will hear this does not adhere to building with Nantucket in mind. Building with Nantucket in mind is written in 1978. And I think that we have to remember that there that was not legislated. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, I'm just going to say that I think that most of us are going to, or probably all of us will agree that the, whatever we said regarding the name house applies to the cottage also. That's right. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so let's just assume that goes down on the record and move on to the sauna. called shed as well. There in the Looks like I don't have that one, so bear with me for a second. Not Mary. Um, this was, I presume, designed and built alongside the original main house and cottage? On those plans, um, I know that it was designed by the architect, but I don't know that it was, I don't know if it was a later addition. So, see those original plans. Um, if I could jump in, this is Rita. The it's not shown on the original plans. Um, okay. Yeah, those show a bocce court and a sandbox, but not a sauna. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I think I'm gonna do it the old way. It wasn't coming through, so I apologize. I didn't have it on my thing. I would have the same comments about this as I did about the garage, that it's not part of the original plan. Um, I hate to see anything wasted. Um, but um, I don't think that the, it, the, the, the property or the house loses any of its uh, significance uh, with this moving. Okay. Thanks, Angus. Um, Lucy, do you want to add to that? I agree with Angus. Yeah, and I'm going to agree with the same, the same comments. It's not quite as significant. All right, thanks Holly for getting that up. Sorry. <laughs> okay, um, why don't we move on to the next topic. <clears throat> thanks Mary and Rita for, for uh, contributing. Thank you. Thank you both. <clears throat> so the next one is um, 10 York Street, new dwelling. Is it not? Sorry, guys. <clears throat> it's not there in my file. 
Anybody, Anybody else? Can, yeah, do you have, do both of you have this, another screen showing these applications? I, guess I do. I do. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to wait for Holly to bring it up. All right, so I'm gonna ask. Go for it. Yeah, if, um, you wanna make any comments now, Lucy? No. Angus? Oh, wait. So I'll, I'll, I guess I'll jump in. I, I think that um, in general, this is actually a, a fairly nice design. I think it fits into the neighborhood and the scale and it's, um, you know, the size and design wise. Um, I think sort of a slight question mark about the two front flush dormers, um, but they don't, they don't bother me too much. Um, I think that while well, they're not standard for a three day and probably not strongly encouraged, I think that you'll, you'll find them. And um, I'm not sure that it bothers me. So I'm not sure I really have any um, specific concerns about this new dwelling. Angus, did you want to say anything? Um, I would share most of what you said. Um, I think there are plenty of examples of two flush uh, shed dormers. Um, the doorway details, I feel like, are in conflict as far as period and design with the two over two window. I would rather see the, I think the, the, the two first floor windows uh, would typically be longer and it would be more of a six over six configuration. Mm -hmm. um, the same with the upper windows. Yeah, excuse me. I'm glad you mentioned that, Angus. I think that this this is um, probably of this style building. You know, why are we looking at two over twos? Wouldn't this be more like a six over six type building? Um, it seems that we would want, it would have been built in an earlier period than a two over two. So um, all to say, I, I, um, I appreciate the, the thought with the massing and the siding and, and so forth, but I, I think the facade, uh, uh, the fenestration should, should change to um, reflect more of this Nantucket style. Mm -hmm. Good. Lucy? Um, I, I agree about the windows and on the site plan, I don't see AC units. Right. Well, let's just be in the back. For those. Um, yeah, I, I, so I'm, I'm going to reiterate Angus's comments. I think, um, I think you were agreeing with what I was saying about six over sixes, which you brought up yourself. And I also agree that the size of the front windows should probably be bigger. Um, I'm not sure what you, if, did you have a, like a different idea about the front door rather than the floor panel, but I guess. Um, oh, I, I like the floor panel. Yeah. It's, um, I think that that would be, um, you know, it, 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 it makes sense with this structure in the facade. It's just that the, the window pattern I would, uh, I would say six over six would would go better, and I think they actually include a photo of an example of a three bay um, house. That um, yeah, it's a little bit further down, Holly. Thank you. Um, that you can see the longer window makes more sense. Uh, keep going. There. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Give it more of a three bay presence. Right. Yeah. How do you feel about the French doors, Angus? 
to the patio. How visible is that? That'd be my question. It would be on the, the east elevation, the east. It'll be marginally visible. I think it'll be visible, but at an angle. You can see it in the in the perspective on the front page there. You see those doors. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, depending on the vegetation, uh, I would prefer that they were stepped further uh, in, into the interior. It looks like there's only a foot or a foot and a half bump back. If it were more like three feet bumped back or something, I think there would be a less of an angle. This perspective that's given might um, might show the maximum angle, be able to see it. Mm -hmm. And and I don't think you really want to be able to see from the road a series of French doors. Um, so I'm not sure how realistic the perspective is, but I would think about changing the um uh, either the bump back or the fenestration back there. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to agree with that and say that maybe they could I think a, a single you know like a double french door rather than yeah. a panel door would be more appropriate. Um, anything else? All right. <clears throat> Moving on. I'm going to come, I'm going to skip off 12 Pleasant, come back to that later. That's all right. Okay. And go down to 30 Pine. So this is my project and um, I'm happy to explain anything, uh, but I'll recuse myself from. Okay. So my only comments about this, Angus, were was the um, you know the the, the gable in the, in the rear um, being flush with the sidewall, and what what that ends up doing is affecting the the roof line to the north, making it somewhat asymmetrical. And I guess my my question would be, can you, if you could just push that back a little bit just to allow that rake to run through? I don't even care how deep, how far away it goes, but I think it's, it's kind of a big change in this building to have that rake abbreviated and turned as it's shown. Can I respond to that? Yeah, please do. Um, I, I had the same feeling and um, I drove around the neighborhood and walked around uh, the streets around there. And this is a very typical detail of a gable coming off um, where it's flush to one side. I, I should have uh, included uh, example photos, but I can do that. Um, but I think even with uh, building with Nantucket in mind has an example of this. Uh, it's because of the floor plan and how things are on the inside. Um, it's already, you know, only 10 feet um, across and it would only be cutting into that space. It, uh, because of the floor plan, it, it couldn't really scoot over. It, it, it would just get smaller. Um, so anyway, maybe I need to, to take photographs of, of examples of that, but it's, it's, you see it all over downtown. If you yeah. want to do that, Angus, feel free to email them to me. I wouldn't be opposed, obviously, to passing those along to the commission. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I know, you, I know that's a, it's not an unusual thing. Um, do we want to see it? No, I don't know. But you're right. It, it's been done, and um, probably fairly acceptable for precedent reasons. Lucy? Also, there's a very um, I mean, this is just a 
this is a view that you would never see. There, there's, um, there's building tight on either side of it. So it's, uh, they're, they're sort of wedge angle views of this looking back. Okay, so not quite as visible, kind of a skewed angle. Good, that helps. Um, see, here's the photo. So this yep. is about as wide of an angle as you can still see it without the thing next door obstructing the view. Okay. Yeah, if you can get photo examples in the neighborhood, that would be very uh, advisable, I guess. Lucy, any thoughts? No, nope, I'm fine with it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Down. So I'm going to skip the next two. 17 Westchester, and if anybody in the public here for the for the ones that I'm skipping, please make a comment, let me know. But um, we'll get back to them at the end of the meeting if we have time. So the next one on the list would be nine Lincoln Ave, hardscaping. Are the old stairs being removed? Yes. Lucy, any thoughts? I do. I, um, I don't blame these people for wanting to replace the stairs. The other ones are treacherous. Um, and I, I'm i fine with what they've submitted. My only comment is that the um, doctored photograph of the new stairs that they submitted, they've got the landscaping on each side of the steps. Um, no, you, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. I think that, that that landscaping should should blend in more um, with the the native stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a problem down the road where you've got the Mayan ruins, what I call, you know, which one I'm talking about. No. On the other side, Cobblestone Hill. Oh yeah. 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 It, I mean, I think that these steps should blend in with a with an, um, natural landscaping um, and just be a quiet access down to the beach mm -hmm. or the road. Okay. Angus? Um, you know, where the, the steer is now, it it feels like it's more part of the uh, landscape because the vegetation is is really high. I mean, it's it's uh, they're like trees hanging over it, so there's more of a, a tunnel experience. I I I feel like um, you know, as simple and straightforward as a straight run of stairs is, uh, it has a huge visual effect uh, that that disturbs the 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 natural vegetation uh, in a very structured way. And along Lucy's thought of it fitting in with the vegetation more, I would be tempted if rebuilding the stairway and, and in a different location is to step this um, so that it, it, it goes up a, a ways and cuts across the, the cliff a little bit and then goes up and, and cuts back across so that there's some sort of staggered vegetation uh, integrated in this, I, I feel like it. it, it it's like a, a escalator at an airport. It's just this long, <laughs> straight. Mm -hmm. Hi, can I interrupt? Sorry, sorry, I just arrived. It's Julie Jordan. Hi, 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 Julie. Thank you. Can you hang on just for one minute and let Angus finish? Um, sure, but I just wanted to say that I, um, I 
don't really have a design for the stairs other than that we want them and we want them to be as historically appropriate as possible. And we're kind of willing to do whatever the board advises as far as a little lighter construction. And Matt McEachern will be um, designing something based on your feedback that can be submitted for the next meeting. Okay, all right, thanks. Hi, Julie, thanks for joining. Hi, uh, sorry, I'm late. No. What I was just saying was with rebuilding this right now with the path where it is and how it's built, it 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 feels like it's sort of part of a wall that exists of vegetation. But if if it were being reconstructed, I I think that it would be more sensitive to the landscape uh, and to the passerby to have more staggering back and forth of of the. Uh, stair as it goes up the hill so that it's more integrated in the hill rather than just being, you know, one I think that would be okay. ConCom had a lot to say about this stair. And just to give you a little history, the stair where it is now is very close to a resource area. Mm -hmm. And it also is under overhanging cherry branches. So it makes it very unsafe because it's super slick. So the reason we're moving it is to bring it into the sunshine. Um, I think that the CONCOM um, would probably be fine with a little zigzag, um, but they want the least amount of disruption as possible because this is considered a coastal bank. Um, it may be one of the only ones on the street, actually. It's not, it's technically a coastal bank, but it's not functioning as such. So it's, it's a little bit in a gray area. Yeah, there's no way to hide it when it's just one long straight thing, but if it yeah. bogs, then there's an opportunity for vegetation to screen it and then you go up another part and like Yeah, that. I like that idea. I like that idea. It's a good, it's good feedback. Yeah, I would, I guess I would agree with that. I think that's a good suggestion. And I, the only other comment I'd say to Julie is that, is, is there any reason that we you can't have um, sort of a natural blending vegetation going up to the steps that similar to what's there now rather than a, a, a sort of looks like different, but maybe that's just the, the graphic. That's just the graphic. It will, I mean, what's there now is generally all invasives, um, but everything that's going in will be similar size, but better for the environment. It's native viburnums, native bayberry, all those things will get big and, and mask the stair. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Chair, Julie, I had a question to you. Um, Based on CONCOM's approval for this location, I assume you have to stay out of the 50 foot setback from the wetland? Correct. Okay, so basically you'd have all this area kind of to kind of meander something through possibly? Uh, I mean, they weren't that into any meandering. I'll just be okay. honest. Um, I think I could probably see how it steps I could probably add one more step at the bottom, which would enable me to hide a landing down at the bottom. And I think it would make it look a little more masked. If I added one more, if you go to the second landing with your arrow. Oh, this one? Uh, not the, oh, not that, I would keep those the same because I think those are doing the meandering thing, but yeah. add one more closer to the bottom of the bank. Okay. And then I think it would give it a little better human scale and it wouldn't look like that bottom is so direct, like an elevator. I agree. I think one more bend in the bottom would really help. About that, a third of the way up. Sure. Like over here. Yeah, yeah, and maybe going the other direction, right? Um, it's that perspective view coming from the street looking up, mm -hmm. I think is what I'm trying to mimic. There is a, um, or there used to be steps going down to the beach at, um, I think, 64 Baxter Road or something like that, uh, maybe 66, that had a, um, a jog in their steps and they actually had a nice seating area. That if it's still there, those steps are still there, that might be worth looking at. What was the address? I'm sorry. It's a, it was about, oh, no, excuse me, about 67 Baxter Road around there. Oh, okay. It would have been the last, near the last beach, I mean, footpath access to the Baxter Road. Mm hmm. So you think one more bend in this and it would be a little bit more. Um, attractive well it makes sense too when you're hauling a whole bunch of stuff to the beach you want to you know 
have it take yeah. a rest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it, I think one bend near the bottom too late would be great. Um, okay, great. Break up the long escalator look. Yeah, I would say a third to halfway up that picture that is shown between the the last landing and the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Julie. All right. Thank you, guys. Sure. Thank you. Next, we have um, 32 Cliff Road. I don't know if anybody's here from Steve's office. Oh. Um, this is obviously a Queen Anne. Uh, it was part of the Sea, Cl sea Cliff Hotel back in the day. So obviously a significant contributing, I would say contributing structure to our NHL. There she is. Very pretty. Okay. Um, I, I didn't see a compelling reason why this porch needed to be replaced, removed completely and rebuilt in a very simple, different fashion. Um, it doesn't, from the photographs, it just doesn't look like there's much rot that's this unusual that couldn't be dealt with in the, in the usual way. Um, I think I really strongly believe this is part of the building and should remain. Um, Lucy? Yes, um, I was up there this morning and looked at it. There is a little rot, but um, it's mostly on the, you know, areas that um, are wicking up moisture on the ground. Um, I think that the detail is part of the charm. Um, they've got Victorian style detailing on the rest of the building and on the side. Um, I think if the area that they want to replace, if they just instead strip down the uh, moldings, um, they would probably be, most of it would be fine it seems like there's a lot of paint that's just globbed on um, and it wasn't a good painting job. They didn't um, strip down or sand evenly. Mm -hmm. um, one of those little balustrades did have some rot in it. But other than that, I think that most of that ornate um, detail can certainly be saved and should be. Thank you. I agree with... Um everything that's been said, I think it would be a shame to lose uh, these details that make this uh, facade unique. Uh, the proposal, um, I don't feel matches the, the, the level of detail that, that this exhibits and what the, the house, um, it would be great to see some historic photos to see when this went in, but it, um, uh, I think it, the, the detail wants to stay. I don't see significant um, compromise to the structure. Um, all of it looks somewhat superficial. So um, yeah, I would keep it. I think we're all in agreement on that one. Okay, any, any, nobody here from the public on this? 
so far. So move on to uh, 30 Main Street. Mr. Chair, 30 Main Street is actually Linda's and she's not here oh. at the moment, but mm -hmm. Ethan is here. Um, he, his was 12 Pleasant Street. All right, we can, we can. That's go. okay. Yeah, I think we'll have enough time to, to finish the agenda. So yeah, let's go back to 12 Pleasant. I had a question about the front door on this one. They under the, they said front doors Gardner Green and French White. Correct. So the the front it's only the front door slab um, on Pleasant Street that's painted green. There are French doors on the rear of the house that are currently white, which will remain white. Okay. So I had um. I had contacted Ethan earlier and asked him because I didn't. I don't really know what Gardner Green is, um, so I asked Ethan to send me a photo of the chip, and it's um. I I might be able to share my screen or maybe Ethan, do you have it there? Um. Yeah. Let me see if I'm able to do this. Uh, I definitely have the chip. So let's see. While I'm pulling it up, it's essentially, it looks like there's two HDC approved greens and uh, Gardner is the lighter of the two. Um, but let me just see here. I've got it on my screen. So I okay. can, Holly, yeah. can you let me do that? Yep, all you gotta do is hit that green button share and click your document. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Gardner Green right there? Correct. Near the bottom. Second up. And what is it now? White? Uh, so currently the foundation and the shutters and the door slab are all black. So it, you know it's dark. Uh, and they're proposing to change just those elements to Gardner Green. Everything else that's white, the clapboard, the trim, the door, uh, the sashes, the French doors, those will all remain white. You said the foundation was black? Correct. Oh, it shows in the photograph. It's like almost natural. Right? Yes, it's it's worn off significantly on that one side. You can see on the left side, um, there's the, it's painted. Uh, there's huge precedent for a dark, dark green um, for, for all these elements, the foundation, the shutters, doors. Um, I don't have an issue with it. I, I wish I were more familiar with Gardner Green. I, I'm Essex and and uh, Forest Green. I'm more familiar with, but um, you know, as well as you can tell on a screen, it looks along those lines. Yeah, I, I agree. Quite I think a few examples good. of it up and down Pleasant Street, which is where the owner got the inspiration. I think um, I'd say typically if it looks green it's gardener green because the hussy green, when it's painted, it looks very black and, and you really wouldn't be able to tell unless you had black right next to it. Okay. Um, any other thoughts? I'm, I'm generally okay with it. It seems dark green is, is where we wanna go in terms of the green spectrum. I think it's, it looks pretty dark, so I'm okay with that. Thanks, Ethan. Thank you. So no, you. no concerns from HSAB on this then? No concerns. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. Okay. You also have the McMillans here um, for 120, 122 Main Street. Okay, I don't know. we can do that next. That's up to you. Yep. Go ahead. 
Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this is at uh, Main Street. Um, and we're, is it 117? 122. 122. 122 Main Street, a house that we had renovated 12 years ago. And at the time, uh, we had replaced a lot of the windows, especially in the rear, and left the existing ones. Um, there were some new ones, but we left the existing and we're asking to replace most of those as well, except for the front Main Street um, existing ones. And although the owners had wanted to go ahead and replace those as well, um, we thought it would be a good nod to the HDC and Main Street to leave them. And they, do not, they don't use those windows as much as the bedroom windows and the uh, uh, study windows any, anyway. So they're proposing to replace 15 existing windows on the east and west elevations with new Green Mountain Milestone series double hung, 12 over 12 or 9 over 9 as required with exact dimensions to match existing. Um, the existing windows, some of them are admittedly older types, but they don't, they do not date to 1816. Their replacement windows are probably as early as we could tell, probably there are some, there are two that we thought might go back to as, as early as the 1860s, particularly the 1880s. Most of them are after 1900. Uh, we dated uh, three or four to be 1910. And the rest were 1950s, 1960s, Brascos and the like especially in the attic, those are definitely 18, 1960s. But um, they do not have the details of the sashes and muntins from the 1860s, I mean, from, from the 1816s. Um, they're butted, they're not fitted, they're not pegged. They're not 200 years old. Um, it's not that you couldn't strip, strip them. You can strip any window, of course and rework them and regate glaze them, et cetera. Which they have been doing. Yes, they have, they have been doing that for the past 12, 15 years. But you'd still be left with ill-fitted windows that they would like to have operating. You know, they're just, especially those along the east and west. You can see this film, the video that we shot, is typical of those windows. They're just ill-operable. Illy, they're not operating correctly. And in the case of an emergency, of course, you know, they're not egress types. They're just in bad shape. Um, we've had uh, Frank Daly, the caretaker, the builder, the contractor, has been um, reworking a lot of these windows over the past 12, 15 years. And they're as good as, you know, the, he can make them, but they're not operating to efficiency and especially the energy efficiency. Um, so we'd like to also replace the storms. Those are modern. Um, unless you have any other questions, that's what we would like to do. East and West windows with Green Mountain. Mr. Chairman, All right. thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Um, comments, Angus. Um, thank you, Nathan. Uh, I haven't come across a window that, that can't be made to, to operate really easily. I've, um, I actually had a window restoration business for a couple of years. So I'm really familiar with the ins and outs of, of what's possible with old windows. And, um, 
I know from working with windows that are 150, 200 years old, that they're the ones that, uh, that, that uh, through maintenance um, and tinkering with, uh, you can get another 100 years out of them. It's the newer windows, the windows that have been built in the past 25, 30, 40, uh, sometimes 50 years, but not much beyond that. That um, that are less resilient. Um, the the wood isn't the same quality. The grain isn't the same. Uh, the longevity isn't the same. The simplicity of fixing the windows isn't the same. But these older windows, uh, most of what you have listed on the survey, um, are excellent candidates for um, for uh, rehabilitation. And um, yeah, there I I. I would be hard pressed to have any sort of justification for uh, for replacing these windows with new windows that will will never last as, as long as these windows will. Um, and as far as um, storms, uh, if you've got triple track storms on the outside, uh, I don't see any reason you couldn't get uh, better working you know, newer ones, I, I don't think that matters. But as far as keeping the sash, um, that's going to be the greenest choice to, to throw these uh, windows out and and look at the, the, the carbon footprint of uh, rebuilding, replacing everything involved. Um, it's, it's hard to justify. And again, the, the, uh, any new window is not going to last as long as these will. Okay. May, I, may I make a comment, Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Just simply that would be Green Mountain. And of course, you know, those windows will last 200 years. The Green but, Mountain. Are, are, Green Mountain are, 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 and they're great, but the wood just isn't the same. They're not built out of old growth wood. Yeah, thanks, Angus. And I, I would echo just about everything you said that I, I think um, the quality and the, of the wood and the construction is far superior to what you're going to get with a new product today. And um, you know, there, well, I don't see a compelling reason to remove the old fabric in this building. It's, it looks serviceable and, and fixable. It's not none of it actually looks even rotted. It just looks like it hasn't been maintained on its tracks terribly well, and could be, I would think, could be fairly easily. Um, repaired and they may functional. Lucy, go ahead. You're muted. Lucy, you're you're muted. Oh I? No, I I totally agree with Angus that these these windows should be repaired. I think if you found that if the old paint was removed, you'd get a lot of the detail crispness back. And at the same time, um I think that the orig original glass should stay with the window. Um, also on an application like this, I would have loved to have seen an, um, an exterior photograph of the front of the house from the street. Thank you. I, I did include that actually. It may not be in that pack, but we did include it with our submission. Okay. Um, I think you're getting a pretty unanimous um, message from at least the three members presently on the HSAB here. Um, any other thoughts, Nathan? Uh, just that, um, you know, we've talked about windows for a long time, of course, and some of them are historic and the kind that you don't want to mess with, period. These are not reg original and they're, they are not as nice as the new Green Mountain that would last for a long time. So, um, you know, if they were if they were really precious 1860 windows that had made it through all these years, that would be one thing. But they're not, and um, you know, it's it's going to be as much to replace repair them and replace the stops and. Um, you know, the tracks uh, that it would probably cost as much as a new window. So 
you know, what you're doing in the, in the end is just keeping them going and they're not as beautiful and uh, they're not going to last as long as a good green, green mountain is a great window. I'm, I'm sure, you know, mm -hmm. so um, that's, that's what I would say is uh, I, if it were my house, I'd be doing the same thing just to have them operate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. So what is next? Thank you. Yep. Where are we, Holly? What do we got? I've lost track. Westchester? Yeah, 24 Westchester, it looks like, would be the next one. Or Westchester. We've got Matt is here. Matt, are you here? You remember this property, right? Yeah. Reduce the garage gable. Hey, Holly, I'm here if you have any questions. Okay. Any? Thanks, Matt. Yeah. To me, this was a fairly easy one. It's just reducing the gable, right? Correct. Good. Anybody have any concerns with this one? No. I, I think we're good with this. No concerns. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. 121 main water feature. Is that next? Hi, Mickey, it's Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Ah, hi, there's a bunch of applications for 121 main. I don't know if you guys want to discuss them either in, in a row. We're separated, I think, by one or two. Yeah, no, let's let's go ahead. Let's let's do the water feature first. Okay. This looks like a pretty tightly spaced section area of Main Street and and um, probably Lisa, is there any chance that this is gonna be visible at all? And Amirka is here as well. Oh. Um, Oh, I'm here as well. I'm sorry. Sure. I'll let hey. her answer that. Yep. Can you, yeah, no, I included, um, if I may, uh, yep. um, I included some pictures from the street yep. uh, to kind of, um, there's an existing wall and planting and patio and the, the feature and patio on the upper level will be fully tucked behind the existing plants. Plus also I'm proposing a little more screening along the patio uh, to uh, reinforce the screening as well mm -hmm. from the street. So I, you know, I'm pretty confident that this won't be visible. Angus or Lucy, do you have any concerns about this one? Yeah, I didn't see any um, drawings about how deep this is. Oh, so it would be like three feet. Is there a limit on the amount of gallons of water um, a water feature or spa may have? Mm -hmm. um, it cannot be more than uh, four feet, I would assume. Yeah, for the spa itself. No, but if for the I'd like gallon, to, she's. I think Mirka, she's trying yes. to say that, that defines it differently from a pool. Right. Yeah. There is a, a cubic uh, measurement that they used to go by. Whether or not they're still using that metric, I'm not sure. And I don't know what it is off the top of my head, Lucy. And, there and is I a definition, mean, yes. I would like to see in the plans how deep that water feature mm -hmm. is. And also I did go up there this morning and um, looked from Quarter Mile Hill. It is not visible from there. Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, Angus, did you have any comments? I, I, I don't think that this is visible and um, I don't have any issues with it. Okay. 
I would agree. I think the only thing, um, you know, it's not really our area of uh, review, but just to make sure that it meets the requirements for a spa, not a swimming pool. So, absolutely. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mirka. So let's do Lisa's. Lisa, you have some other 121. Yep. Can I ask a question first? Sure. Holly, can, are you going to um, bring that up at HDC that the um, depth of the water feature? Yes, if you all feel confident on that, then yes, I can I can definitely do that. Thank you. So we have an addition on 121 Main. Is this the main house? Main house. Yeah, so it's basically Mickey taking off the screen porch and enclosing that area yeah. into livable space. And you're making some other window changes. Yep, there's some other uh, miscellaneous revisions. N yep. Nothing really facing the front. Um, I'm just going to go to my elevations in your order because mine are in. On the side, it is filling in the porch the, where the outdoor shower currently is and removing some of the windows that are on that side property line. That's on the east and removing the chimney mm -hmm. and then rebuilding the porch. What's the date of this house? Uh, the, the front part, I believe, is very old. I think that, and Mickey, you can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the rear work was done. I mean, you, you built the rear part of the house, correct? We did some work on it. I think the porch was, I don't remember doing the porch. We did work in the kitchen and some other interior work. Um, so it's been a while. I forget exactly what we did. Yeah, I, th I think the chimney, the back chimney was added, was a newer feature because there's a, there's a foundation under the whole back section, mm -hmm. whereas the front section only has a root cellar. So it sort of feels like the whole back section was reconstructed from basically where those little uh, square windows are back. There's a pretty um, old fireplace in the back kitchen area, isn't there? Is that right? Yeah. I'm thinking of the right house. It looks old. It was, I think it was rebuilt. Henry Daring and I think we're, worked on this maybe. Yeah. But that would make sense because I know Lindsay did the work. Yes. Um, any comments, Angus or Lucy? I think that there's uh, limited visibility here. Um, so my concern would be more with the loss of historic fabric, uh, most especially the chimney. But um, depending on yeah, whether that was an older addition or not, uh, where those pr um, changes are made on that back L. Um, aesthetically, I don't have an issue with what's proposed um, it's a, a more a matter of the uh, loss of the historic fabric. And I have some drawings from the building department, which I can um, I can uh, bring to the meeting to look at the dates. Just Great, thank you. If I have them all, um, I'm, I'm pulling them up on my computer um, just to sort of see. I mean, it certainly looks like the whole thing. I, you know, it's hard for me to tell from Mickey's drawings what's new and what's what's. Uh, old. I can't remember what we did. Yeah, but the whole the whole back section of the house, I can share my screen if you want to see it. If it helps, is um, I'll do I'll, I'll do it right now. Is shown as new framing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the root cellar. This whole thing is the new basement area, that's the um, the concrete for the new fireplace, for the big fireplace. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's all the new framing on the first floor. I don't, I just have a feeling that we didn't really add that much space, but it was more of a re rebuild, and I forget why. I think that fireplace might have even been there. 
and we just rebuilt it. But it's been, yeah. it's been longer than I. It might, yeah. I mean, that could be maybe the the mass was there, and you guys took it down and reconstructed in the same location. I'm not positive, but it seemed like there was a lot of rework to the back section in terms of framing the joists or TJIs listed. Mm -hmm. um, that does look like uh, new construction there. It does. It sure does. So that's why I I assume that. You know, reworking certainly this this area in the chimney was okay, but um, and the screen porch. I think if the if the chimney had been uh, preserved and and reworked into the last design, I I would rather see it preserved and and reworked into this design. Uh, but it looks like the the framing and the windows and and so forth are are new. Lucy, any thoughts? Uh, no comment. Yeah, I think my only my only comments, and I think it's sort of a minor thing, but on the on the west elevation, you're you're pulling two windows together on the second floor there. Yeah, I know. It feels a little uncomfortable just considering the, the orderliness of the rest of it. Uh, that's kind of visible from the street. Yeah, I know that was a tough one with the plan. I mean, I I I I frankly like the idea of it kind of breaking the grid of what existed. Um, but just with the plan, it was it was difficult to incorporate the windows as they were. So we were hoping to move them closer together. There's gonna to be um, a bathtub under them. Poor excuse. I mean, I could go to maybe one window, but maybe that's in smaller windows on either side, possibly. Well, I'll, I think I'll just leave it as a comment about you know, okay. pulling them that close together to me feels a little tight. Um, okay. Fair enough. I'd agree with that comment. I think you could still have them above the the tub and make it work, but I would I try to get another foot in between them. Yeah. Yeah, I have to move the shower then. But <laughs> anyway, that I can. I'll. Uh, I appreciate the comment. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there are any other concerns with the rest of it. Maybe a little, little comment about removing a chimney um, and filling in the porch looks fine. So I think we can move on to the next one. Okay, thank you. And this is just the other structure, which is to add, um, the other structure remains pretty much as it is, but with that water feature there, they're gonna, they'd like to add a little area to be able to put a bathroom and a ping pong table. So we just added some doors on the south elevation that faces the water feature. Everything else stays the same. Oh, and I think we made one set of doors larger because he can't get his car into the main garage bay because of the proximity of the building to the hedge. He drives, a, unfortunately, a Suburban. <laughs> so. He can get into the what's called the rec room now. So that those garage bays are getting that roof is getting lifted up, the angle um, flattened, and we are putting larger garage doors facing the west. But again, I think the visibility of that back section is probably limited. I agree. Um, the French doors would not be, we would not want to see those from the street, but I'm not sure that you can. Lucy? No, I mean, my only question is, is that a new building, relatively speaking? Yeah, I believe, Mickey, you guys built this from scratch. I was, you know, I know we, I think we put the shed on it. I can't remember if the, the main part was there. I think we, there may have been something there that we modified. I can't remember. Hold on, I'll I'll, I'll see what I have in the in my file. Um, it's title. Let's see. It it doesn't. I guess it doesn't really say. But um, you know what I have doesn't say. I have floor plans and elevations. Mm -hmm. It it makes it look like the whole building existed, but. I mean, that you built the whole building new. It doesn't look like a renovation plan, but it was yeah. just HGC drawings. Yep. 
recall. What year would that be? Uh, let me see if there's a date. Uh, 11602. Thank you. Okay. Um, Angus? Um, the earlier uh, version, the proportions of the size of the doors to the size of the gable end of the barn uh, make sense. And then with the lower shed and uh, additive massing to have a, a relatively smaller scale door uh, looks much more in, in sync with, with the scale and proportion. Uh, so I would, uh, I'd much rather see that a smaller door stay there. Okay, thanks. Um, again, I'm not really sure you're going to see those doors from anywhere, but um, I, 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 I agree with Angus. So it just the new set of doors looks awfully large. Yeah. Well, as I said, unfortunately, you can't get into the other garage bay. So that was the reasoning behind it. But I'll take some good pictures and bring them to and submit them to Holly from the street. Good. So that we can ascertain the visibility. Perfect. Okay. Isn't Thanks. there a four wheel drive mini available? Yeah, really. I was going to say that too. <laughs> well, you're trying, you're, you're talking to a mini driver. So I could definitely get my car in there. Oh, and then are those are those doors natural to weather or were they painted? I can't remember. They were painted, I believe. A gray? Painted. Yeah. I can I can check the photos, but I'm pretty sure they're painted. Well, as long as they're not a, you know, that with those two doors, that'd be a lot of white. They're uh, painted white now. They're painted white now. Is that white? No. Okay. They're both painted white. Look at cream. Mm -hmm. Not quite white. It looks it looks gray on my computer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're white. Like the windows to me look pretty okay. white, but All right. it's hard to tell. I see what you mean. They look a little like a very light uh, Quaker gray or something. Yeah, dub gray or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. I assumed they were white, but I could take I'll, I'll take a because I think the house is white, so it'd be strange if the cottage didn't match it. So that's what I assumed. Now, were they changing the driveway on that? I yeah. hope there was grass in, in front of that, that door that you were going to change right now. Uh, which door are, we are you back on 121 Main Street? Yeah. Which door on the main house? The door? No, 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 on the garage. No, there is grass. You drive over the grass to put the oh, car. Oh, okay. So yeah. you're not changing any of that then? No. That's okay. all remaining grass. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, thank you. I think I have a couple more. Okay. If they're which ones are they? Uh, I think they're in order: thirty-four Cliff and sixty Walsh, sixty-two Walsh. All right, thirty-four Cliff. Which one do you want to go to first? You uh, you have thirty-four pulled up, don't you, Holly? Oh no, sorry. I'm looking at another another project on my screen. Gotcha. Thirty four so, um, This is a, a house that has very unusual roof lines, and we've done some work on it already. Um, and we are coming back for some fenestration changes along the back, which I believe is impossible to see. Yeah. Um, but it's just to reorganize the French door, change the French door location so that they can have better circulation for what little patio space they have back there. Um, and then relocating a small window that faces, that's above the shed. Okay, um, does anybody have any concerns with this one? No, I don't see any photographs though. Uh, nope. Unless there was another sheet, I only have five pages. Uh, I can pull them up very fast. I have them on my. Lisa, I don't, I don't, you know, this is probably not very simple. Yeah, I mean, 
just in the future, I'd like to see photographs of something like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why they weren't submitted. I don't know if it was because it's gone through you guys before, but I, we certainly have them and can certainly uh, bring them to the meeting. I'm not sure why they're in, not in the file. Fine, if you wanted to email them, that's... Yeah, they're hard, you know, the, frankly, the back is really hard to see, but it's really hard to photograph a lot of this building, but I will get you uh, certainly a view from the front and what we can from the back and the sides. But if you look at the site plan, it's extremely tight on both sides. So there'll be like little, you know, there's this, this particularly on the north, we'll just take a shot down that angle, but I'll get some pictures. I don't think we have any concerns with that one. No concerns? Yes. No concerns. concerns. Perfect. Um, All right, next one. 62 wall. This is also a, um, I think, on the very back of this building. So I think visibility is limited. Mm -hmm. um, they would like to, uh, they have an existing porch that they'd just like to add some glass panels to, similar to how you would see on older porches just for windscreens. And those are on the south side that back up to the property line. And then a pergola on the east side, which again is behind other aspects of the architecture. So I think it's gonna be very hard to see. That's the pergola. I looked at this in the locust map and the, and the satellite images and it looks, I don't, I can't imagine how you'll see this back greenhouse building from anywhere. Um, any comments from Angus or Lucy? I agree. I, I don't see how you could get a, a view of this. I, I don't have an issue with it. Okay. Lucy? My only question, is this in, technically enclosing a porch? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think so, because the sides are open. Do you know what I mean? The one side, the, the I don't know, I'd have to talk to the zoning officer about that in terms of whether it's going to count as ground coverage, but the two sides will still be open. Well, that's my only question is if, you know, five years down the road, is this suddenly a, uh, you know, an added room to the house? Well, it doesn't have any, it's, it's, it's on a deck. It does, has no um, HVAC out there. Yeah, well, so. other than that, I have no concerns. Okay, same with me. Any more, uh, Lisa? Nope, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Appreciate your time. Yep. So is anybody else from the public here to, for other applications that we should get to them before we run out of time? Yes, yes. Uh, you, we are here with uh, 16, the Gaspari project. Uh, this is Peter Zimmerman, Peter Zimmerman Architects. Warren Fisher is going to be presenting, though. I have to leave for another meeting. Okay. And Jane? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Jane Quirk. I'm here for uh, 30 Cliff Road, the John A. Conflon, uh Revocable Trust. I think it was number 15 on the <clears throat> on Val Oliver. Uh, yeah. Couldn't make the meeting, so I'm, I'm the trustee, so I'm the owner. Okay. So um, why don't let's let's, um, let's go to 30 cliff if you don't mind Peter we'll get that I think that should be fairly quick. Um, yeah I, I, would you like me to make just a couple of comments um, Our previous application um, as you can see this is a revision. Uh, to a previously approved application um, the previous application had, interior stairs to the basement with a set of exterior cellar stairs as the second egress method. Uh, in this revision, we are eliminating these exterior cellar stairs and instead putting in a side door for easy access to the interior stairs uh, from the outside. Um, as you can see in the photo, um, the one that's sort of inserted above, I don't know if I can't point to it, but um, yeah, that photo, exactly. <laughs> um, there's an old door that was boarded up on the same wall as the proposed uh, side door. Uh, one point to, uh, to note is the application mistakenly indicated that the new door would be in exactly the same location as the old door. 
Um, in actuality, um, if you look on the floor plan, which I believe is the next uh, slide, um, the new door opening will be shifted over by just a couple of feet from the old door in order to line up better with the interior stairs. And then um, a window well will be added on the north side of the building for the required second egress uh, now that the exterior staircase is uh, being eliminated. Um, so we felt that by eliminating the exterior cellar stairs and instead adding a door in the vicinity um, of the old door, that these changes uh, would also be more in keeping with the historic look of the house. Okay. So I'm looking at the application. I don't really see any architectural elevations of doors and windows or, and you know, I see photographs in a site plan. Yes. The yeah. Floor plan. Um, yeah, that was the original application did not have any um, elevation drawings as well, because this was really just to um, uh, raise the building to, you know, put in a foundation because the building currently sits on the ground um, on very uh, small brick piers. So the original application basically just showed um, the photographs of the building where you could sort of see, you know, how close it is to the ground. And um, the plan is obviously to raise the building, um, put in a foundation with basically a crawl space in the front two thirds and a cellar, you know, full eight, an eight foot uh, basement in the back third. Um, and then just put the building back down. <laughs> so, well, uh, if, if, am I am I wrong? Did you did you mention earlier that you're going to be doing window? You're at you're changing doors. You're moving a door and a window. No, no we're, we're we have to add a window well in the basement for the second egress. And then, as far as um, the door is concerned, we are adding a door on that side north wall, and Ironically, we found that there was a door that actually had, had been there in the past that had been boarded up. Yes, that's exactly where it was. So um, while we're not gonna actually open it up right there, we're gonna shift the opening over to the left a little bit so that it will line up with the new interior stairs. Um, but we felt that this plan would be better than uh, constructing uh, a set of exterior stairs on the outside, which is what we had originally um, applied for and had been approved. Okay, well, it does sound like an improvement, but I think that we're normally used to reviewing architectural plans and elevations. I think, I don't think there's gonna be much of a concern about this one, but um, I'll leave it up to the staff to, to determine what, you know, more in terms of accurate drawings and elevations <clears throat> should be proposed. Right, I know Val Oliver, who uh, was, you know, made the application for us for the original one. Um, she had, did not think that an elevation was being necessary, nor did she think for this one as well, where we're just, um, you know, we're just, um, we're, we're not changing the, really the height of the, hu the house other than, you know, eight inches of, of the foundation exposure. Was this previously approved as a, as a new foundation in a, in a Yes. yes, this went through you all, Mr. Chair, um, and the HDC approved it this past summer. Here's the uh, approval. And it was just, it was just for that back portion, which is right here, which is, is correct me if I'm wrong, um, more contemporary than the original structure up front from the 1820s. Yeah, the, I mean, there will be a foundation under the entire house, but the front right. portion will be a crawl <clears throat> and then the back portion will be um, an eight foot basement. And you're not you, applying for any of that right now anyway. No, that's already been approved. The and, crawl, yeah, right. And because you all, I'm sorry, Jane, through, um, through you, Mr. Chair, you all approved, well, reviewed and the HDC approved, you all had concerns on the visibility of the uh, crawl space addition of what it was going to look like from the street for the the um, older portion of the structure, and it's that back L addition, if you will, that has that um, basement underneath. So that was something that you all looked at, and the HDC did approve. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe it looks like the the basement floor plan right here. It almost looks as if there was going to be a, a door there anyway. So maybe this proposed yeah. um, to match that. 
Well, the original plan where you, know, you showed um, those exterior stairs, um, I believe, I can't remember now. If you, I was gonna say, we went back to that original photo. Um, yeah, the, um, I think the, the door into the basement was gonna be basically under the door that's currently there on the first level that goes into that back room. And is this door that was recently found over here? No, it's, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's right, move your arrow, right there, exactly, okay. right there. It's actually okay. to the left of that wall. It's, that wall. This okay. is the wall, yeah, right there, exactly. So, so it's only music, moving a couple of feet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I wanna just, in, in, just to move this forward, because um, we still have a number to, to go and not a, a lot of time. Angus and Lucy, do you have any other cons any concerns? Um, I have two concerns, and you, you already brought up w one, which is uh, with any change that happens on the the outside, there would be be an elevation, there would be a door schedule, there would be uh, a, a note of where where the existing door is and where the proposed door is, and so we see that in plan, but not in elevation. So um, it's important to, to, to be able to put that in context. Um, and I'm having two thoughts about the door location. Um, just as a safety precaution and saving historic fabric, I, I would have the door open to a hall rather than to a stair uh, to go inside a door and then have, uh, imagine it's dark uh, go right down the stair. It it, uh, it doesn't seem as safe as the existing door. Also, the the fabric that uh, of the building that has to get disturbed to move the door um, is taking taking away from the building. I appreciate the move of putting this on the inside instead of the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's more sympathetic to the structure, and you'll be happier in the backyard there uh, with it. So. Um, I, I appreciate the proposal in general. I just, I would think twice about moving that door and I definitely like to see that in elevation. Um, well, I, I, just to um, explain, I guess, as you can see that door right now um, is boarded up. We, we didn't even know it existed to be honest. So from the outside, you can't, you can't see anything. Um, so um, we had just felt that, um, we would be sort of replacing or you know putting back a door that used to exist. Um, so that's why we felt that it was actually going back to its you know historic roots. Um, right. And in terms of the location, the reason we put it uh, in the plan opposite the stairs, it was really so that it would provide access from the outside down into the basement going down those stairs. Um, so it would accomplish what we were trying to do on the exterior stairs, where if we needed to get, you know, patio furniture or something into the basement, we'd be able to do it um, rather than, you know, going in the first floor and kind of going around a lot of corners to get down to those stairs. Um, so that was the reason that the door was placed where it is in front of the stairs. But, um, you know, so the, um, when we presented this to Val, she, Val Oliver, she felt that this was a, you know, a better plan than the one that we originally had gotten approved for, so. Okay. And Lucy? Um, just a quick comment. Um, that old door, is it possible to reuse that door? It might be, I don't know. It's, you know, right now it just has shingles on the outside. And um, so it's probably been you know, got a lot of nail holes and all on it. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's a possibility. Okay. Um, I also think this is kind of in the back of the house and pretty tight area also and probably not terribly visible. Yeah, it's, it's very close um, to the neighbors. It's on the north side of the property. Um, so if you look at the um, plot plan, you'll see it's only about um, five feet from the property line there, mm -hmm. and the neighboring house is um, is 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 probably like another five feet on the other side of the fence. 
Um, so, and it's definitely not visible at all from the street. Right. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to move this forward. Any, any concerns, Angus or Lucy? I have no concerns. No. Thank you very much, Jane. Oh, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Sure. So, so we're okay with the current plan then? Well, for our board, but then it's gonna go to the HTC. Yes, I understand that. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for your patience in the in waiting. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, Peter Zimmerman, you're up. Hi, uh, this is Warren Fisher from Peter Zimmerman's office. I'm gonna be presenting today. Okay. So. Um, our project was to create a uh, small basement access along the side of the house um, in order to have some access to the basement for mechanical equipment. And then uh, it, we located it in, in the location on the front left um, side of the house in order to take advantage of the, the lower grade on that side of the house. And also the fact that the existing house only has a real um, root cellar in the front really half of the existing portion. So um, that seemed like the most logical place to uh, do that. And uh, we could match some of the existing um, older um, kind of shed details. Um, along the side of the house, we had uh, proposed uh, new windows to match the existing windows. Uh, they would be made by the Boston Sash and Millwork Company. Uh, to be, uh, you know, authentic double hung uh, windows. Uh, they would be um, also match all the interior details of, uh, of those windows. And uh, the last portion of the uh, proposed project was to create a storage um, shed along the side of the house with, uh, and also a fence enclosure for the HVAC equipment. Um, both of those items are very difficult to see from the street. Um, they're kind of tucked around the existing mass of the house. Um, and one last thing about the, the, the basement access in the front is also located in kind of a way that uh, you can see in photo eight, you know, it would be uh, behind the planting. So it wouldn't be as um, visible from the street uh, in that location. Thank you. I um I looked at this earlier and I didn't see you know there's there's actually a lot going on here in terms of new windows and sheds little small sheds and um and this basement access and I I don't really have any problem with it specifically in fact I think that the basement access is kind of done in a style that probably would have been done years ago and I kind of liked it um, my only comment was you've got some casement windows in the back but they're so far to the rear, I don't think anybody's going to see those. Um, so, to me, I didn't really have any real serious concerns with this one. But um, Angus and Lucy, you may see something I didn't. Go ahead, Lucy. I'm very sorry to see that small, narrow green door go away. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, if you, uh, it, it's a little bit taller. We were thinking about reusing it on the opposite side instead of the, I think we have a nine or 12 uh, light window on the opposite side. Um, but when you move it there, the, the, the height of the eave really do, doesn't allow for reuse of that door. Uh, the client would like to keep it for possible future reuse if, if there are any other you know, projects down the line that he, he's considering. Or even interior. Right, exactly. I, I would hate to see that end up in the dump. No, that, that, uh, that, that's definitely staying on, on the premises. I'm just not sure how we're going to reuse it yet. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that uh, for this the typical Nantucket. I mean, this, this is a gorgeous house, so. Mm -hmm. Angus? I think it's a very sensitive proposal. Uh, as you say, Mickey, there's a fair amount of um, disturbed fabric for these windows, but they're all um, thoughtfully placed and logical in the existing uh, design and plan and, and um, scale and uh, detail. Uh, I, I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, same here. Um, so I'm gonna, aside from trying to save that door, I think I'm gonna call this one no concerns. That's not right, Angus and Lucy? Yeah, I'll, no concerns. Great. 
Mr. Go Chair, ahead. I just threw you um, to, to Warren and, and, um, just for a future application, if you wouldn't mind um, providing the historical documentation or at least the filling out on the application, since this is a you know typical Nantucket historic structure. Okay, Appreciate it. I apologize. Thank you. No. Okay. Please Thank no. you. Thank you. So what, what haven't we done? Um, Kathy? Are you here for an application? Hi, yeah, I was just here to listen to the um, number 22, 14 Lowell Place. Okay. Yes. So we're still waiting for Linda on that one for both 30 Main and um, 14 Lowell, but um, I think, did we get everything else? Or are we, we missing something? Um, we did 24 Westchester. Are those the only two? Look around. No, we have seven. We didn't do 17 Westchester, did we? Perhaps not. Is that the spa? The spa, nag. Yeah, no, we didn't do that. Okay. Yeah. And then we also have 84 North Liberty Street that were skipped. Um, Let's do 17 Westchester. Okay, 17 Westchester. Holly, do we have to do we have to close up at four? Um, I've checked with town admin. We can go past that. Um, <laughs> luckily, there's nobody else booking this after us. So, great. I double checked earlier today. I'm gonna have to check these. PDFs, apparently some of them are not, and I downloaded them, so bear with me. Lucy, did you take a walk by this one? Um, I did go down there, and I really couldn't see anything more than the photographs um, that were submitted. Um, So I, I, I really couldn't tell. This is one that to me seemed probably not invisible. But, you know, maybe a slight chance from back by Kite Hill, but pretty unlikely. So I didn't really have much concern about this one because of visibility. I mean, I couldn't even tell if the spa was already there. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> okay. No, it is not there. Yeah, I think it's new. Angus, <clears throat> I I agree. I don't think it's um it's really visible. Okay, so I'm going to say no concerns on this one. Okay. And then the other one you mentioned, Holly, what was that? 84 North Liberty. 84 North Liberty. North. There we go. Another one kind of tucked back off the road. I guess you know this house, right? I think I lived there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not. <laughs> yeah. Is it visible? Um, I don't think any of this was visible when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> it's a deck and some stairs. To me, it seemed. Probably not visible in um, almost in keeping with what's going on there already. As far as I remember, this is um, this this was there was there was already precedent for you know the the deck like this anyway. So I, I don't think anything's changing appreciably even if you could see it but i don't even think you can see it yeah 
Great. Lucy? No concerns. Same here. Okay, no concerns. Perfect. Yeah. Are we, are we getting down to 14 low place? Or is there another one for Linda? Oh. Yes. Linda had 30 and 14. So if she's not here, we're just, I think we should just go. Yeah. Yeah. So how about 14 low? Kathy's here for that. Yes. Appreciate your patience, Kathy. 14. So of course, this is a demo move. Um, this is that little um, bungalow, it's out front. Mm -hmm. She says prior to 1935, I would agree with that. I think I saw something in the 20s. No, she's got history here, which is good. Kathy, are you the neighbor next door? Yes, yes, I'm at uh, 12 Lowell Place. Okay. Right is there that in this the photo. One? Yes, yes. That's what I thought. You're in a butter. Did you want to say Direct anything to this? No, no. Uh, our concerns come in more with the um, the new house and the new garage. Right. <clears throat> Which we're not applying for today. That's right. So. <clears throat> They're still under review of the HDC as well as revisions would probably come back to you all too. Just, just so you note that. And they were concerned about these trees back here. So this is the, oh, okay, I apologize. It's not this structure right here. It's this one back here. Yeah. That one, okay. Uh -huh. Comment? No concerns. Maybe. Uh, is the garage uh, pre-1935? This is about 35, is that what they said, Holly? Yes, by 1935, so it's pre-55. Um, I think it's probably from the 20s. I was actually referring to this, the um, bungalow in the front. Is there any evidence um, that they were built at the same time? Possible. Let me see what I can find real quick. I know I have this information somewhere, but. It seems like this should be tr tracked with its replacement. Um, I agree. Yeah, but we should comment on it while we can. So. HDC survey from 1989 says it's circa 1940. So give or take 1935, 1940, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. um, let me look to see what NHL data says real quick. Well, I'm hearing that it's probably about 80 years old, maybe yeah. older. Again, I, I just, I. I feel like it's our responsibility to to uh, preserve and work with these buildings rather than have them demolished. Mm -hmm. the, picture, the picture of the foundation looks like it's concrete block, but that doesn't necessarily mean um, it wasn't added to come out later. Right. I, you know, I, I'm sort of indifferent on this one. I think that, you know, I'd, I'd hate to see anything like this torn down. If it could be reused, repurposed elsewhere, that would be great. Um, yeah, unlike um, the structure, one of those, the, the structures we were talking about earlier where there's significance, historical significance to the designer and the, and the building itself. Um, I guess this doesn't stand out as much. So really what, what's writing is how, you know, how old is it? Is it 80 years old or is it 40 years old? <laughs> you know, it sounds like it's gotta be at least 50 or 60 years old. It probably is. Maybe 80. Um, that so, is 
a perfect tree behind there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. Are they planning to cut that down, Howard? I don't think so, but I, I can tell you that those concerns were brought to the agent during the review of the new dwellings in the back. And I know um, neighbor here has also voiced her concerns on that um, in written form as well. So mm -hmm. it's duly noted and I um, would hope we'll find more information on those trees. Yeah. Okay, we're, so I think it's mostly no concerns, but I guess I'm going to recommend this to track, as Angus had mentioned, if yeah. that's okay with you all. No, that's fine. <clears throat> Good. Anything else? Is there another one for Linda? Yes, yeah. 30 Main. You all saw 30 Main. Previously, this is um, also known as the Masonic Lodge. Oh, no. <laughs> and this is primarily for the rear. There's a window on this side. Mm -hmm. She's got photographs. Uh, transom up here is rotting. Leaks is non-functioning. Cannot be accessed from the inside. Um, I don't have, I don't think there's photographs now, is it? So we don't have photographs from the inside to see it, but we don't have jurisdiction over that. So that's what they're wanting to do, remove it. You know, I, to me, if you remove those upper windows, it leaves the lower two double hinds sort of floating in the middle of that wall. And, it, and I think that the upper two windows helps make, helps that whole window set kind of relate to the structure and in, in in even to the dormer above. You know, I don't know. I think they align, but I'm not really sure. Um, it seems like if you remove them, it's going to be like a void there. <clears throat> so I would, I'd, I'd kind of like to see them leave those windows. I agree. I, I see that giving more relevance and meaning to the, uh, to the windows below it, it looks like it belongs there and, and uh, ties it in with the rest of the structures you say. Mm -hmm. And it probably it's, it yeah, ties it be like a blind window or something, but that gets that gets weird with shingles. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, Nancy, go ahead. Um, I've only been upstairs in that building once, but I mean, as I recall, it very high ceilings, um, and from the interior, that that window would probably be appropriate, as is. The height. I was in there once myself, and I think isn't there a stairway up at that end of the building? And yeah, I think so. That's probably where the windows are in the stair. Um, so I, you know, I don't know how it relates to the inside either, but okay. I still think that from the outside, I think that they serve a purpose, and I'd like to see them remain. Mm -hmm. Right. That wrap it up. Well, I would like to make a comment about this building that it, it, it's unfortunate that that all these meters and everything else, utility stuff, have to be in such view from the street right there. They did a lot of work on the back of this building. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that can be done about it, but in the future, I mean, this is the kind of thing that should be avoided. Yeah. I always let the commission know when you bring stuff up like that, so. Yeah, I mean, you stop right there because of traffic and everything else, and you're looking at, you know, you can read the meters. You know, it, it, they can be boxed in as long as there's access panels, as far as I know. We've seen that done plenty of times. Oh, yes, they can be. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Good comment. All right, I know we went out of order, but I think that is everything. Also, um, under other business, HDC advisory committee appointments. If you have not done that, please do so. Get that to Kathy. I think we we have received 
some and she's she's been doing fantastic on getting that taken care of and i believe they'll be before the commission tomorrow night okay i think i sent mine and i assume they got it perfect yep good yeah i'm okay good sounds good um, I'm looking at most of the agenda. I, I don't see anything that we missed. Uh, no, I think we got it all. Okay. All right. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Yes. How about need our comments? Thank you. <laughs> what was that? Oh, to uh, motion to approve our comments. Oh, okay. As written by MC Ryan. Okay. Is there a second to that? Yes. All, uh, all those in favor, Angus? Aye. Lucy? Aye. Aye. I have a motion to adjourn now. Yes. yes. Sounds good. Seconded by Lucy. All those in favor, Angus? Aye. Lucy? Aye. And I too. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Holly. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nikki. We took some of these down off their agenda, which is good. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a have a good evening. <laughs>